Good morning. Uh, pleased to have all of you join us for an exciting announcement in FC Cincinnati's history. Uh, this morning, we're pleased to announce Cincinnati Bell is the presenting sponsor of the Crystal Palace match. Uh, having Crystal Palace of the English Premier League come to Cincinnati uh, is a uh, monumental event. It'll be the largest spectacle, largest soccer spectacle in the history of Cincinnati soccer. Uh, complete, I will share this morning with post-match fireworks show. Uh, Crystal Palace is, the, uh, is a great team in the EPL, uh, and uh, I think everyone here knows that the English Premier League, it's the NFL, if you will, of, of, of Europe, uh, the largest sport, uh, the largest, most successful league. So having Crystal Palace come to Cincinnati really validates what we've believed all along from our owner, Carl Linder III, uh, all the way through our staff, our coaches, and our players, and our fans, that Cincinnati is a great soccer community. Uh, and it, so it validates their decision to come to Cincinnati, validates our belief that this is a great soccer town, and also the enhancements that we've made at Nippert Stadium in our partnership with the University of Cincinnati. Uh, FC Cincinnati, we will soon be releasing for sale Crystal Palace match-specific merchandise, scarves, shirts, and the like. Uh, we'll be releasing that on social media, and we'll have that available online and, and in our store. Uh, people have asked about our sales. Our sales have been outstanding. We're already in a position where we will have the largest crowd in the history of FC Cincinnati. Uh, we're nearing 25,000 seats sold, uh, and we obviously hope to sell out uh, Nippert Stadium. We have uh, almost three weeks to go. Uh, we recently just uh, opened up the East Pavilion at Nippert Stadium. Uh, let me talk a little bit about the East Pavilion. Uh, the East Pavilion are some of the best seats at the new Nippert Stadium. It was part of the renovations that were done uh, in 2015. Uh, the East Pavilion seats have the same sight lines as our club seats uh, at, uh, at Nippert Stadium for our games, which are completely sold out uh, for FC Cincinnati. Uh, in addition, the East Pavilion has new skywalks, uh, new, um, uh, con a new concourse, easy access to restrooms and concession stands. So these are really uh, great seats. People ask maybe, well, if they're such great seats, why aren't they available for your FC Cincinnati matches up to this point? Well, the fact is, is we wanted to create an intimacy on the lower seating bowl, and to have the ability to get to about 20, 22,000 seats on the lower bowl meant we didn't need to open up the East Pavilion. But obviously, the great demand of, uh, for Crystal Palace meant a need to open it up, and the sales in the first week uh, have been terrific. So this is going to be a very exciting game. Uh, and it's made possible by the great support we've received from our fans uh, and today uh, with the announcement from Cincinnati Bell. So I want to introduce uh, uh, Ted Torbeck. Uh, Ted was named uh, the president and CEO in 2013. He came to Cincinnati Bell in 2010 as the president and general manager. Uh, Ted has been a leader uh, at Cincinnati Bell in the community. He's currently chairing the United Way campaign here in 2016, and he's on the board of the Chamber of Commerce. He's on the board at Xavier University, his graduate school alma mater, uh, which he went to after he uh, left Miami University. So we share uh, undergraduate and graduate schools. Uh, Ted is also on the board of 3CDC, Ready Cincinnati, and the Health Collaborative. Please join me in welcoming Ted Torbeck. Thank you, Jeff. Really appreciate it. Um, Cincinnati Bell is extremely proud to uh, sponsor this event. Um, FC Cincinnati has done a fabulous job in generating a lot of excitement, a lot of enthusiasm in the city. Cincinnati Bell has a long-standing tradition of supporting many initiatives, you know, health, education, but we also like to support uh, our sports teams. And FC Cincinnati has come to Cincinnati, generated a lot of excitement, and uh, are doing a fabulous job. It's a very family-friendly environment, and it's one that we're just proud to support. We're doing this for not only FC Cincinnati and the city of Cincinnati, but also our great employees and our great uh, customers that we have in the city. 
So we're, uh, again, extremely excited to be a part of this and, uh, and looking forward to July 16th. You know, uh, I've had a number of uh, interviews with national and international publications who were surprised by the soccer uh, community, the soccer experience that has been exhibited here in Cincinnati this year. They ask, how is FC Cincinnati doing it? Clearly, there's something going on in your city for you to be able to achieve crowds of 17,000, 18,000, 19,000, more than 20,000. Just to give you a sense, the average attendance in our league is about 3,600. 3,600 is the average attendance in our league, and we're averaging 17,000, okay? So there are, there are uh, 29 teams in our league, which means that every weekend there's 14 matches. 14 matches. When we have a home game, we're one of 14 matches, and our attendance is over a third of the entire league. So I, I share that to say people are wondering what in the world is going on in Cincinnati. And so it gives us a platform to say, well, let us tell you what's going on in Cincinnati. Cincinnati is a city on the rise. C Cincinnati is a city that people want to come to. Cincinnati is a, a community that people want to raise their family, where they want to work for our great companies, where they want to come and entertain and do fun things, uh, where millennials want to go when they graduate from college. Cincinnati has all these great things, and we uh, which is one of the great things about pro sports is we get to raise the platform of a city that is already great. We just have a little bit of attention that's brought to it because of the interest in sports and our culture. And, and so I say that because uh, the reason that we are successful, and I firmly believe that, is because Cincinnati is a city on the rise and soccer is a part of that rise. We have always said from the beginning that we wanted to be another jewel in the crown of this beautiful Queen City. Uh, and we are proud that we, are, we have been able to successfully play that part this year. Uh, but I, I remember from the very beginning, uh, we had leaders not only in our ownership group, but civic leaders who said, this is great for Cincinnati and we're going to stand there and we're going to be uh, there with you all the way. And our next speaker is, is been above and beyond uh, the strongest civic leader in the community helping us out. He was there at the day we launched. Uh, he's my friend. He's, uh, he's not a graduate of, of Miami University <laughs> and Xavier University, but he is a fellow graduate of St. Xavier High School. Yes. And then he went on to John Carroll University, Harvard Divinity School, and Harvard Law. Uh, he served on city council for eight years, where he helped craft the collaborative agreement. Uh, working with Mayor Lucan and the business community, he helped create 3CDC. Uh, and uh, since 2013, when he was elected uh, the city's 69th mayor, uh, he's been doing an outstanding job. So please welcome my good friend, John Cranley. Thanks. Thanks, uh, Jeff uh, and Ted. Um, first of all, Jeff, it's a great uh, pitch for the city. Uh, I know you're busy, but we want to hire you to be our chief salesman. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, we are out there actively recruiting businesses to Cincinnati, and that's exactly the kind of enthusiasm it sells, and it all happens to be true. I think Jeff is right that, that Cincinnati is a unique city that is embracing soccer like no other city uh, in this country. And I believe it is – FC Cincinnati is the future of Cincinnati. And one of the great things about Cincinnati is it marries the past with the future. We have this incredible um, – 19th century uh, architecture in our urban core. We have a fastly uh, growing population in our urban core. And we have a, a proud urbanism uh, of our Bailey, whatever they're called, the Bailey folks, um, who are, you know, meeting up at bars just to walk onto the field. Uh, there's a real cultural, I mean, we, in many ways, it's a European sport, and we have cultural ties to Europe in our history, and, and that comes out. Uh, and who we are. And so we believe that, that uh, FC Cincinnati is the future, and we're going to do everything we can. I'll just add that since they Bell and Ted Torbeck, who is also a friend, time and again, you know, are willing to put their money where their mouth is and make a difference for this community. Um, I, I know I have uh, uh, bought tickets to the game for Crystal Palace. This is going to be a huge opportunity because it's such a big team um, across the pond that – uh, there's going to be a huge crowd, so I'm going to be there uh, personally, and it's uh, thrilling to know that there'll be fireworks uh, thanks to Cincinnati Bell and Ted Torbeck's leadership. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>
from the moment we announced that uh, Crystal Palace was coming to Cincinnati, we immediately started getting uh, social media contacts and phone calls from Palace supporters all over the United States and many in, in England uh, looking to make the trip to our beautiful hometown. Uh, and uh, they're all contacting us asking, you know, what are the hotels we should be staying at? Uh, are there hotels that can be sort of the home of Palace supporters? Are there bars and pubs nearby that we can walk to? Uh, how, do we, uh, how do we explore the city? And so I knew to immediately get on the phone with Dan Lincoln and say, Dan, this is going to be a great opportunity for the Convention and Visitors Bureau uh, to uh, host, as, as the Convention and Visitors Bureau always does, large groups that are coming to town. Uh, we're expecting thousands of Palace supporters. Uh, the match program is going to have some interesting uh, Palace elements that you'll have to come to the match to see. Uh, but the point is, is we're going to be wonderful hosts to all these visitors for this friendly. Uh, and it's very exciting, and the economic impact to the city should be extraordinary. And to talk about that a little bit, we have Barry Parks, the VP of Sales and Marketing for the Convention of Visitors Bureau. Barry. Thank you. Pleasure to be here today. As you can probably tell, I've got the English accent, and they saved me till last because uh, I know a little bit about, uh, as you say, soccer, but as, as I say, football. So. Uh, you know, we do approximately $4.4 .4 billion in economic impact and about 24 million visitors. This is another one of those great events that uh, Cincinnati is going to be hosting, uh, bringing people across, and yes, the phones are ringing, certainly at our offices, to bring people across the pond to look at Cincinnati. Cincinnati has some great attributes, obviously, being very much a European city, uh, great beer, great restaurants, that uh, they're really going to enjoy it here, and uh, certainly, FC Cincinnati is uh, just an incredible uh, team, and uh, we look forward to a long uh, relationship with, with you and uh, wish you uh, a victory against Crystal Palace. It's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a great team, so you're going to be a pretty great team, but uh, I know you'll win. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. you know, uh, Barry said something uh, that uh, I'm going to share a timely anecdote. Uh, I met, uh, I met up with Pete Rose with my son and his buddy a couple uh, years ago in Las Vegas. Uh, and uh, Pete Rose asked my son and his teammate soccer, what's the most important part of sports? And uh, my son, uh, trying hard, working hard. That, and he goes, no, no, Pete says, no. The most important part of sports, winning. Yeah. Winning is the most important part of sports. So I like what you have to say, Barry. That's our goal every time we step on the pitch. <laughs>